Welcome back to the shop everybody. So this is a follow-up video from the last one we did where we made the green mold. Here we're going to show you what we made that mold for. We're going to begin with a piece of black walnut. It's a little rough but it'll work. And we'll whack through that with a karate chopping miter saw. So after I cut it to an excessive length I took the bark off the outside edge. We're running it through the planer here to smooth it off. Again, this thing is way longer than we need by about six inches. But it sure is pretty when you take the ugly off it. Now we'll cut it down to a more manageable width. One pass through the table saw should do it. Squaring up the end. Now we'll get it to the proper length. Cleaning up the outside edge. Let's see if it fits in the rubber mold. Well looky there, perfect fit. Okay, this is a solution of salt water, salt, water, and vinegar to take the tarnish off of the shell casings with. It does an outstanding job. It really did shine up the shells very nicely. We'll try to compare them here and maybe you can see the difference. You can see that the one on the right is a lot shinier than the one on the left. Another little close up for you. So we decided to let them sit overnight and after they had sat overnight to dry obviously they had white tarnish on them so steel wool it was. Lisa and I hand polished each one of those shells with steel wool until we got them to what we felt was the correct luster or shine. huge difference there. So we realized at that point the best option right from the beginning would have been the steel wool. So working as a team playing basketball as you can see I had to stick with wrestling here at one point. That's why I never played basketball. <laughs> So here we're getting an idea how many are we going to need to lay out because we had way more than we needed. Here's an absolute fail. This did not work. I pushed it right out of the drill. Meanwhile, while I'm playing games trying to come up with a faster solution, my wife has them just about done already. Now we decided that we didn't want to waste epoxy filling all of these up, so we started with a glue gun. Thinking that we could fill the bottom half with glue and the top half with epoxy, as you see here. We learned that that step was a mistake. If you ever do this, my recommendation is spend the money on the epoxy and fill them from the bottom to the top. Now here I didn't have any weights available, so those water bottles worked very well. And what that's doing is creating a seal, pushing down on the rubber mat, so this pretty purple epoxy won't go underneath that board. Them bottles just happen to work correctly and work very, very well. Took off the aluminum foil roof. This is the next day. Actually, this is an hour later, I'm sorry. Swirling in the pattern to give it that pretty looking swirling action of what would be granite if it was a stone. Now, getting rid of the bubbles. This is the next day. Lisa and I had a pretty good debate on what we thought was the best way to hold these in place and we got together and decided 
CA glue with no activator was the best way to do it. And you see how long it took for each piece. And here I'm going to speed it up. We went through and glued every single shell casing down. Then I went back through and very lightly touched each shell casing to ensure that it was in place and not going to move. We're creating a little bit of a dam here in case I put in too much clear epoxy and it goes over the top. We don't want the epoxy on the board. The epoxy we're using is food grade epoxy, so we're not worried about putting anything dangerous in this if the person that has this decides to actually cut on it and prepare food. This took almost a half a gallon to fill that little void. It's incredible how much epoxy we use to do something like this. You think it can only take a cup. Meanwhile, it took almost four. Here's showing you how close I came to going over that dam. Learned that trick from my brother-in-law at Bucky's Customs. He's got a YouTube channel too. He focuses on a lot of CNC work. You can check him out. And here we made our aluminum foil roof again. The reason for that is Mr. Atlas, he drools a little bit. And when he drools, it goes everywhere. Now back with the next day and we're gonna take this thing apart and keep our fingers crossed. Now when we flip this thing over, you can see the board almost falling out of it. We went around the outside edge and we broke free the epoxy. Everything was going well and that thing peeled out of there just like we planned it. And a big sigh of relief because that thing came out out of that thing incredible. You could also see that there wasn't much epoxy building up or getting through underneath on the bottom side I should say. It really did come out nice. Now here we're going to trim off the edge. This thing is called a miter set that I'm using and it's used to create angles on your miter gauge. I want to make sure this is dead square. You can check this out if you'd like I'll put the link in the description below for this tool. It's called a miter set and it's an awesome tool for making picture frames and etc. Anytime you need an angle that thing will nail the angle for you. And again we're trimming this off making sure that it is absolutely square. Both ends obviously. And now begins the fun part, sanding. That is 100 grit sandpaper. And after 75 hours of sanding we were down to 1000 grit on the epoxy. Dust collection? What dust collection? That's a router. We're putting a chamfer on the outside edge. And that epoxy goes everywhere when you're doing stuff. Here we're going to use my polishing tool. Polish this up just a little bit further. Like I said, we took it down to a thousand by hand. And now we're going to buff this thing out. And here we're going to apply some walrus oil to this piece, both front and back. And it really makes the grain pattern pop on this thing. This thing isn't coming out too bad. Pretty impressive. Now Lisa can try to hide, but she ain't going to do a very good job. All right, everybody, there you go. A beautiful cutting board, charcuterie board. Whatever you want to call it. Look at my hand through that thing. I don't know if you can see it, but this thing came out phenomenal. We actually saw these made by another YouTuber, and my wife and I said, man, what a great idea. Let's give it a shot. So we started with looking up prices on epoxy mold, and I said, uh-uh, I'm not spending $200 on an epoxy mold. So we, we created the green mold, then we created this thing. And we're super stoked on the way this thing came out. It is a beautiful charcuterie board. I don't know if it's a cutting board or a charcuterie board. It'll probably be a wall hanger by the looks of it. But at any rate, I hope you got something out of the video. I hope you enjoyed the video. As always, we appreciate the likes and the subscribers and the shares. Okay, everybody, my wife reminded me to tell you that we're actually going to put these things up for sale if you'd be interested in any of these. 
send us a message at one lisa hinkle at gmail.com and we can discuss variations prices and etc and as always i'll catch you on the next one